सहनावतु सहना भुनाक्तु सहवीर वहाय तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मा विद्विषा वहाय शांति 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 आओ सहनावतु सहनाओ भुनाक्तु सहवीर वहाय तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मा विद्विषा वहाय आओ शांति 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 Namaste. So this invocation is meant to establish the proper mood for Vedic study. And this mood is an expression of the principle of Upanishad, which is going to be the subject of this video. So the principle of Upanishad finds three primary expressions. in the three meanings of the term upanishad now first of all we're going to be following the commentary the tikka on the upanishad by shri pad shankaracharya shankaracharya if you don't already know is the greatest he's the greatest sage on advaita and also on bhakti and he is the one giving the total view that encompasses all vedic literatures based on consciousness so we're trying in our humble way to follow in his footsteps and give commentary on different vedic scriptures according to these principles and what are they according to shankaracharya the word upanishad is derived by adding upa near and ni with certainty as prefixes and kvip as a suffix to the root sad meaning to split up destroy go reach attain or loosen so we can understand the prefixes but the suffix kvip is a little difficult because it's a virtual suffix it doesn't actually appear in the text but the meaning is to convert a verb into a noun and in english of course there are many examples of verbs that become nouns like run uh to say let's go run 100 yards and say we went for a 100 yard run see that's the difference between a verbal form and a noun form of the same word so in our case also there is no change in the text the meaning has to be derived from the context and this is where i wish i had a little parrot sitting on my shoulder saying rock context determines meaning rock <laughs> context determines meaning so even if the actual word form doesn't change the way it's used changes the meaning from a verb to a noun upanishad as it's used to refer to the literature upanishad is a noun but it not only refers to the book upanishad it also refers to the knowledge i think principally it refers to the knowledge upanishad the book upanishad is simply the recording of that knowledge and then the principle or the method of upanishad is how one attains that knowledge so these are the three definitions and i'm going to explain each one 
First of all, the knowledge Upanishad. Upa, come close. Ani, with confidence, with certainty. Shat, and go. That means this knowledge helps one go to that place where there's no more suffering. Because shat can also mean to destroy or loosen. And indeed, this knowledge destroys or loosens the hold of the ignorance that causes suffering, that causes birth in the material world, and so on. So we want to have this knowledge. Where do we get this knowledge? From the book Upanishad, and there are many Upanishads, 108 principal Upanishads, and many more besides. And these form the latter part of the Brahmanas, which are a section of the Vedas. Now, of course, Brahmana can also mean a Vedic priest. But here it means a section of the Vedas that deals with self-realization. How do you approach the truth, the knowledge that leads to liberation? And finally, the method, Upanishad. We've been over this before because Shat can also mean to sit. So come close with confidence, with steadiness, with certainty, and sit down, Upanishad, and hear this knowledge, this knowledge Upanishad that leads to the liberation of the human spirit from ignorance and suffering, from the book Upanishad, and also the person Upanishad, one who has realized, one who knows that this knowledge is really the solution to all problems. And so this is going to be our quest. This is going to be our direction. And as we began with the invocation, we're going to go deep into the Sanskrit. Now, why is Sanskrit important? Well, we went over that in the Matrika series. Because in Sanskrit, each and every syllable has a meaning, like upa, adi, sat. Huh? And when these meanings combine in words, they have potency. I wish I had a word to drive away these bugs. <laughs> but the potency of a word is its meaning. Because on the level of mind, on the Manomaya Kosha, in dream consciousness, Svapna, there is a phenomenon called the objectification of meaning. That simply by thinking, for example, uh, don't think of an elephant. <laughs> Got to, right? You had to think of an elephant to understand what I said. So simply by thinking, these things become real. Simply by conceiving, for example, the idea of Brahman, or the idea of liberation, or the idea of a knowledge that leads to complete cessation of suffering. Just by conceiving those notions, it opens up the possibility that they can manifest, that you can experience them. That, in other words, they can become a reality, at least to you. Even if the world, <laughs> I mean, the world is in such a mess, right? The world does not understand liberation. It doesn't understand transcendental knowledge. That knowledge which has no referent in the material creation, in the temporary world, but exists to refer to or explain or describe the transcendental world, the invisible world. And this is called in the Vedas invisible knowledge. See, that knowledge that you can't see it, but if you implement it, you can certainly feel it. And actually you can see it in the mind, in the intelligence. And this is the idea that by using intelligence as a creative force, by using the power of sushupti, by cultivating, repeating certain impressions, certain thoughts, certain pictures, 
word pictures and mental pictures that describe things that are outside the limits of material manifestation. One can realize them. One can bring these possibilities into actualities. And that is the purpose of this series. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>